Communication in the Real World, Chapter 16, New Media and Communication, narrated by Scott Smith. As we learned in Chapter 15, Media, Technology, and Communication, media and communication work together in powerful ways. New technologies develop and diffuse into regular usage by large numbers of people, which in turn shapes how we communicate and how we view our society and ourselves. The transition over the past 20 or so years from old media to new media marks a significant change in how we use technology to communicate as devices and the messages carried on them move from mass to micro and our relationship with new media becomes much more personal and social than it is with old media. This chapter is just an introduction to the dynamic area of research and development involving new media and communication. Given that this area of study changes rapidly, I will supplement the information in this chapter with content on my blog, which you can find through my website, http colon forward slash forward slash www.richardgjonesjr.com. Chapter 16.1 New Media Technologies Learning Objectives Number 1. Trace the Evolution of New Media Number two, discuss how new media are more personal and social than old media. So what makes new media, new media? When we consider old media, which consists of mainly print, radio, and television movies, we see that their presence in our lives and our societies was limited to a few places. For example, television and radio have long been key technology features in the home. Movies were primarily enjoyed in theaters until VCRs and DVD players brought them into our homes. The closest thing to a portable mass medium was reading a book or paper on a commute to and from work. New media, however, are more personal and more social than old media, which creates a paradox we will explore later in this chapter as we discuss how new media simultaneously separate and connect us. In this section, we will trace the evolution of new media and discuss how personal media and social media fit under the umbrella of new media. The Evolution of New Media New media, as we are discussing them here, couldn't exist without the move from analog to digital technology, as all the types of new media we will discuss are digitally based. See Apera, 2012. Digital media are composed of and or are de- designed to read numerical codes, hence the root word of digit. The most commonly used system of numbers is binary code, which converts information into a series of zeros and ones. This shared code system means that any machine can decode, read, binary code, can make sense of, store, and replay the information. Analog media are created by encoding information onto a physical object that must then be paired with another device capable of reading that specific code. So what most distinguishes analog media from digital media are their physicality and their need to be matched with a specific decoding device. In terms of physicality, analog media are a combination of mechanical and physical parts, while digital media can be completely electronic and have no physicality. Think of an MP3 music file, for example. To understand the second distinction between analog and digital media, we can look at a pre-digital music and how various forms of analog music had to be paired with a specific decoding device. To make recordings using old media technology, grooves were carved into vinyl to make records or changes were made in the electromagnetic signature of ribbon or tape to make cassette tapes. So each of these physical objects must be paired with a specific device, such as a record player or a cassette deck, to be able to to decode, and listen to the music. New media changed how we collect and listen to music. Many people who came of age in the digital revolution are now so used to having digital music that the notion of a physical music collection is completely foreign to them. Now music files are stored electronically and can be played on many different platforms, including iPods, computers, and smartphones. In news coverage and academic scholarship, you will see several different terms used when discussing new media. Other terms used include digital media, online media, social media, and personal media. For the sake of our discussion, we will subsume all these under the term new media. The term new media itself has been critiqued by some for setting up a false dichotomy between new and old. The technology that made new media possible has been in development for many years. 
The internet has existed in some capacity for more than 40 years, and the World Wide Web, which made the internet accessible to the masses, just celebrated its 21st birthday in August of 2012. So, in addition to the word new helping us realize some key technological changes from older forms of media, we should also think of new as present and future-oriented, since media and technology are now changing faster than ever before. In short, what is new today may not be considered new in a week. Despite the rapid changes in technology, the multi-platform compatibility of, of much of new media paradoxically allows for some stability. Whereas new technology often made analog media devices and products obsolete, the format of much of the new media objects stays the same even as newer and updated devices with which to access digital media become available. Key to new media is the notion of technological convergence. Most new media are already digital, and the ongoing digitalization of old media allows them to circulate freely and be read, accessed, played by any digital media platform without the need for conversion. See Apera, 2012. This multi-platform compatibility has never existed before, as each type of media had a corresponding platform. For example, you couldn't play records in an 8-track cassette tape player or a VHS tape in a DVD player. Likewise, whereas machines that printed words on paper and the human eye were encoding and decoding devices needed to engage with analog forms of print media, you can read this textbook in print, on a computer, or an e-reader, iPad, smartphone, or other handheld device. Another characteristic of new media is the blurring of lines between producers and consumers, as individual users now have a more personal relationship with their media. Personal media. Personal media is so named because users are more free to choose the media content to which they want to be exposed, to generate their own content, to comment on and link to other content, to share content with others, and in general to create personalized media environments. To better understand personal media, we must take a look at personal media devices and the messages and social connections they facilitate. In terms of devices, the label personal media entered regular usage in the late 1970s, when the personal computer was first being produced and plans were in the works to create even more personal and portable computing devices. Looters, 2008. The 1980s saw an explosion of personal media devices such as the Walkman, the VCR, the camcorder, the cell phone, and the personal computer. At this time, though, personal media devices lacked the connectivity that later allowed personal media to become social media. Still, during this time, people created personalized media environments that allowed for more control over the media messages with which they engaged. For example, while portable radios had been around for years, the Walkman allowed people to listen to any cassette tape they owned instead of having to listen to whatever the radio station played. Beyond that, people be began creating mixtapes by recording their favorite songs from the radio or by dubbing select songs from other cassette tapes. Although a little more labor-intensive, these mixtapes were the precursor to the playlists of digital music that we create today. Additionally, VCRs allowed people to watch specific movies on their own schedule rather than having to watch movies shown on television or at the movie theater. While mass media messages are the creation of institutions and professionals, many personal media messages are the creation of individuals or small groups whose skills range from amateur to professional. Looters, 2008. Personal computers allowed amateurs and hobbyists to create new computer programs that they could circulate on disks or perhaps through early internet connections. Camcorders allowed people to create a range of products from home videos to amateur or independent films. As was mentioned earlier, portable music recording and listening devices also allowed people to create their own mixtapes and gave amateur mus musicians an affordable and accessible way to make demo tapes. These amateur personal media creations weren't as easily distributed as they are today, as the analog technology still required that people send their messages on discs or tapes. Personal media crossed the line to new and social media with the growing accessibility of the internet and digital media. As media products like videos, music, and pictures turned digital, 
The analog personal media devices that people once carried around were no longer necessary. New online platforms gave people the opportunity to create and make content that could be accessed by anyone with an internet connection. For example, the singer who would have once sold demo tapes on cassettes out of his or her car might now be discovered after putting his or her music on MySpace. Social Media Media and mass media have long been discussed as a unifying force. The shared experience of national mourning after President Kennedy was assassinated and after the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, was facilitated through media. Online media, in particular, is characterized by its connectivity. This type of connectivity is different from that of mass media we discussed in Chapter 15, Media, Technology, and Communication. Whereas a large audience was connected to the same radio or television broadcast, newspaper story, book, or movie via a one-way connection channel sent from one place to many, online media connects mass media outlets to people and allows people to connect back to them. The basis for this connectivity is the internet, which connects individual computers, smartphones, and other devices in an interactive web. And it is this web of connected personal media devices, like computers and smartphones, that facilitates and defines social media. Technology has allowed for mediated social interaction since the days of the telegraph, but these connections were not at the mass level they are today. So even if we think of the telegram as a precursor to a tweet, we can still see that the potential connection points and the audience size are much different. While a telegraph went to one person, Olympian Michael Phelps can send a tweet instantly to 1.2 million people, and Justin Bieber's tweets reach 23 million people. Social media doesn't just allow for connection, it allows us more control over the quality and degree of connection that we maintain with others. See Apera, 2012. The potential for social media was realized under the conditions of what is called Web 2.0 which refers to a new way of using the connectivity of the internet to bring people together for collaboration and creativity to harness collective intelligence. O'Reilly, 2012. This entails using the web to collaborate on projects and problem solving rather than making and protecting one's own material. Bowler, 2008. Much of this was achieved through platforms and websites such as Napster, Flickr, YouTube, and Wikipedia that encouraged and enabled user-generated content. It is important to note that user-generated content and collaboration have been a part of the World Wide Web for decades, but much of it was in the form of self-publishing information such as user reviews, online journal entries, diaries, and later blogs, which cross over between the old web and Web 2.0. The most influential part of the new web is social networking sites, SNS which all allows users to build a public or semi-public profile, create a network of connections to other people, and view other people's profiles and networks of connections. Boyd and Ellison, 2008. Although SNSs have existed for over a decade, early iterations such as Friendster and MySpace have given way to the giant that is Facebook. Facebook, which now has more than 955 million monthly active users, is unquestionably the most popular SNS. And the number of users is predicted to reach 1 billion by the end of 2012. Hunter, 2012. More specific SNSs, like LinkedIn, focus on professional networking. In any case, the ability to self-publish information, likes, dislikes, status updates, profiles, and links allows people to craft their own life narrative and share it with other people. Likewise, users can follow the narratives of others in their network as they are constructed. The degree to which we engage with others' narratives varies based on the closeness of the relationship and situational factors, but SNSs are used to sustain strong, moderate, and weak ties with others. Richardson and Hesse, 2009. Let's conceptualize social media in another way through the idea of collaboration and sharing rather than just through interpersonal connection and interaction. The growth of open source publishing and Creative Commons licensing also presents a challenge to traditional media outlets and corporations and copyrights. Open source publishing first appeared most notably with software programs. 
The idea was that users could improve on openly available computer programs and codes, and then the new versions, some kind, sometimes called derivatives, would be made available again to the community. Crowdsourcing refers more to the idea stage of development, where people from various perspectives and positions offer proposals or information to solve a problem or create something new. Brabham, 2008. This type of open access and free collaboration helps encourage participation and improve creativity through the synergy created by bringing together different perspectives and has been referred to as the biggest shift in innovation since the Industrial Revolution, Kaufman, 2008. In short, the combination of open source publishing and crowdsourcing allows a community of users to collectively improve on and create more innovative ideas, products, and projects. Unlike most media products that are tightly copyrighted and closely monitored by the companies that create them, open source publishing and crowdsourcing increase the democratizing potential of new media. The advent of these new collaborative, participative, and democratizing media has been both resisted and embraced by old media outlets. Increased participation and feedback means that traditional media outlets that were used to one-way communication and passive audiences now have to listen to and respond to feedback, some of which is critical and or negative. User-generated content, both amateur and professional, can also compete directly with traditional mass media content that costs much more to produce. Social media is responsible for the whole phenomenon of viral videos, through which a video of a kitten doing a flip or a parody of a commercial can reach many more audience members than a network video blooper show or an actual commercial. Media outlets are again in a paradox. They want to encourage audience participation, but they also want to be able to control and predict the media consumption habits and reactions of audiences. See Apera, 2012. Getting Real the open source philosophy in the professional world. No matter what career you go into, you will interact with something that is open source. It will likely be some type of open source software since that is the area in which open source product development is most commonly applied. Brabham, 2008. When something is open source, its essential elements are available to anyone who may want to use and or improve on the product. So, for example, when software is open source, the code is available to anyone who may want to edit it, as long as they continue to the open philosophy of product development by then making their version, often called a derivative, available to anyone who may want to edit it. Within this philosophy, the synergy that is created when a group of people with different levels of knowledge, experience, and expertise work collaboratively leads to innovative ideas and products that are then shared with commons rather than kept as proprietary. One example of this, of free, open source software that is used in many professional settings, is Mozilla's Firefox web browser, which I'm sure many of you use. Another example of open source innovation that we may soon be interacting with frequently in our professional and personal lives is 3D printing. 3D printers are already being used to print custom prosthetics used in knee and hip replacement surgeries, replacement parts for electronic and mechanical devices, custom guitars and shoes, food, and even skin that can be used on humans for skin grafts. Although the rapid advances in 3D printing have so far been limited to a small group of investors, specialty scientists, doctors, and early adopters, 3D printers for professional and personal use are now commercially available. The community of people using these printers is committed to keeping the, them open which means that when a user designs a program to print a plastic test tube holder that can be put on a standard drill to create a centrifuge, he or she will make that design available for anyone to use and or modify. This type of do-it-yourself production could have implications for all types of businesses who could, for example, save money on design, production, and shipping by printing their own custom or specialty products. Number one. Discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages of open source model of product development and innovation. Number two, based on your current career goals, how might open source products like computer software and 3D printers play a role in your day-to-day -day job duties? Key takeaways. New media consists mostly of digital media, 
which are composed of and are designed to read numerical code, such as binary code. New media are distinct from old media in that they are less linked to a specific media platform and are therefore more transferable from device to device. They are also less bound to a physical object, meaning that information can be stored electronically rather than needing to be encoded onto a physical object. New media are also distinct from old media in that they are more personal and social. As the line between consumers and producers of media blur in new media, users gain more freedom to personalize their media experiences. Additionally, the interactive web of personal media devices also allows people to stay in touch with each other, collaborate, and share information in ways that increase the social nature of technology use. Exercises Number 1. Getting Integrated Identify some ways that you might use new media in each of the following contexts. Academic, professional, personal, and civic. Number two, how do you personalize the media that you use? How do, you, how do digital media make it easier for you to personalize your media experiences than analog media? Number three, aside from using social media to maintain interpersonal connections, how have you used social media to collaborate or share information? End of section.